Welcome to part two of our custom ultimate water cooling guide. Part one, we went through making sure that you test the system dry to ensure that all the parts work. And in part two, we're gonna start to get into the actual liquid cooling part. So we're gonna go through the selection of the components. And then from there, we are going to go into actually physically mounting the blocks and then a visualization process on how to make sure that at the end of it, you are left with a result that is not only high performance, but also visually pleasing. So here we're going to go through the parts you need for your ultimate water-cooled system and the choices that we made for our ultimate water-cooled system. So number one, you have to figure this out early on, is the case. In this case, we are going with the Silverstone TJ11. It's not cheap. However, this is an ultimate water cooling guide, not a uh, you know, half hour ultimate water cooling guide. So this is a very expensive case, but we went with it for a number of reasons. Number one is that it's roomy. You can install anything in it, including the Gigabyte G1 Assassin motherboard that we're using for our ultimate system and the quadruple radiator that we're using to cool the dual GTX 590s and the Core i7-990X Extreme Edition. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty ultimate. Let's just leave it at that. So we're going with that. Now, in terms of the actual water cooling parts, once you've selected your case, you can start to make some of those choices as well. I usually start with the heart and soul of any liquid cooling setup, and that is the CPU block. We're going with the Swiftec Apogee XT Rev2. Swiftec is well known for high performance and low restriction water blocks that also have a phenomenal visual appeal. Now they've got a new block since I requested this one for my ultimate water cooling guide, so be aware of that. The Swiftec Apogee HD is behind me. It's available in black and white, and that's probably what I would go with over the older XT if you're building something now. In terms of our video cards, there's not many options for ultimate water-cooled video cards. There's the GTX 590 or there's the EVGA classified GTX 590 with a water block. So we went with the one with the water block. I think that's uh, fairly self-explanatory. Now, you can cool video cards using individual blocks for the GPUs and little sinks for all the RAM, but one, it's not ultimate because it looks kind of tacky. And number two, this is a far more elegant, far more reliable solution. I have personally had video cards have a RAM sink or a VRM sink fall off during operation. In this case, it was an SLI. It fell off the top card onto the back of the bottom card and shorted out my system and shut it down. The video card didn't die, I was very lucky, but I prefer full cover blocks from then on. Next, we have our RAM. In this case, yes, we're going overboard. I know this is an ultimate guide. We are using Mushkin Copperhead liquid cooled RAM. So we have RAM that has flat surfaces on the top. Actually, cameraman, if you wanna come in and have a close look at the flat surfaces on the top, you can also see that there are threaded screw holes. Uh, do you have that? Yep, and then what you do is you take the copperhead block, which is in here, whoops, let's flip that over, the copperhead block and you install it across your multiple liquid cooled memory modules. It looks so good, it is so elegant a way of doing things that I could not resist putting that in our ultimate liquid cooling guide. Now in terms of pump, Really, I feel there's only one option for pump. There's the Swiftec MCP655, or there's things that I don't prefer. It's reliable, it performs incredibly well, it has a two-year warranty, although I have at least two of those pumps that I've been running for more than three years. One of them's been going almost 24-7 without a hiccup. I love that pump. Fittings, you've got a lot of different options. We went with compression fittings because I really like the aesthetic of them. You can go with barbed fittings, but you end up with sort of a, a hose over a barb and then you have to put some kind of clamp on it. It can look a little bit less clean. I do like the look of the compression fittings. Next, you've got your reservoir, which I have hidden under some other stuff here. I almost always go with a Swiftec MC Res Micro just because the size of it, makes it very easy to hide away inside your system no matter what case you're using. You just take this thing, you got lots of different options for your inlets and outlets. You can see here, you can do both in the front, you can do your, um, you can do one in the bottom, one in the front, and you just hide that wherever you want it to go, stick it to something, and it's completely out of the way. You can forget about it, and really reservoirs are meant to be functional and not beautiful, so I, I definitely go that way. 
Uh, one other thing we've added is a compression fitting that is, it's called an SLI fitting or a crossfire fitting. So we're going to use that to bridge the gap between our two graphics cards. Finally, we have the radiator and the fans. So fans, we've gone with green LED air penetrator fans. They're very quiet, very high performance, great for radiator use. I already went through the quadruple radiator a little bit, and I'm just going to show you guys the size, the sheer scale of this thing. It's going to fit in the basement of our TJ11 case right here. We're going to take out these hard drive cages. We're going to fit that in there, and that's going to cool our dual 590s and our Extreme Edition CPU. Last but not least, for color coordination purposes, I've gone with green tubing and green fluid to make sure that it will match the Gigabyte G1 Assassin motherboard that we are using for our ultimate guide. Now, the first step in any good CPU block mounting procedure is cleaning the CPU with 99% isopropyl alcohol. So you can see here, I am just using common toilet paper in order to do most of the cleaning. So you can see it's pretty much clean now, but that's not good enough because you can see here, look, I'm going to take another surface, a clean surface of it. I'm going to go like this and you'll be able to see it. Look at that. It's dirty again. So what you need to do to finish it off is actually use something like a microfiber cloth in order to ensure that it is completely free of any surface contaminants. So you just go ahead, wipe that off. The isopropyl will evaporate itself fairly quickly. There we go. So now we're done with that one. And the next surface that you pretty much don't need to do the, uh, the, the, the quick clean on with the toilet paper, but you should pretty much give it a, just a little once over with the microfiber cloth is the bottom of the CPU block. You can see it's been protected in transit anyway. So we're going to go ahead, peel that off. Just give it one little wipe. I've still got some alcohol on here. So just a little wipe, make sure that any dust is off there. And now we're ready to apply our fresh thermal compound, which we're just going to use the line method, applying a line down the CPU actually have a completely dedicated video to CPU uh, thermal compound installation if you're really that curious. Then we're going to remove the sticky pads on the back of the back plate. Line the back plate up. We'll be back in a sec. Picked up the block and we are ready to mount it. So the back plate is attached to the back of the board. The holes are lined up. Now Swift Tech has all kinds of guides for how to get the best cooling performance out of your block, but for aesthetic reasons, I am going to mount it in this orientation because that will allow me, once I've mounted the board into the case, to have the cleanest possible layout for my tubing. So once you get the block lined up, you want to go ahead and do just a slight tightening of all four thumb screws, so just a little bit, uh, making sure that as you line the whole thing up on the block, all of the thumb screws are going through the holes in your board. There we are. So we're just tightening these all up a little bit. Okay, just so that they're all lined up. Now, once they're tightened, you're going to go ahead and tighten them completely in a cross formation. So you do it about the same on diagonals and then about the same on the other diagonals until you're all the way in. Swiftex mounting hardware is awesome because they've got a nice strong back plate and then they have stoppers on their thumb screws to keep you from going too tight. Now for a couple reasons I'm not going to show you guys full cover GPU block mounting. One of the reasons is that on my Linus Tech Tips channel I've already done a detailed guide on how to do this. And the other one is that the only way to get these SwiftTech 590 blocks is to buy them pre-installed on EVGA classified water-cooled cards anyway. So if you're building this particular machine, you will not need to install the water blocks on your video cards. Now, one of the most critical things to spend time basically just staring at your case and visualizing and then test fitting things, playing around with it, is radiator positioning. So in this build, we're going to be using a single 120 up here. We're going to be using a quadruple 120 in the basement or the bottom. We have a pump that we need to install. We have a reservoir that we need to install. And we have to make sure that it's all going to fit in a way that's visually pleasing. Now, in terms of mounting, there's a reason I have this ugly box here. Industrial strength Velcro, double-sided Velcro with uh, adhesive on either side. This stuff's awesome. I use it for mounting uh, radiators, reservoirs, and pumps because it gives you some vibration dampening because it's so thick and it never comes off unless you want it to, which is great. 
So I'm going to go ahead and put that aside for now. Other things that you got to spend some time figuring out are where you're going to mount things like cold cathodes. So we have spent some time figuring that out. But what I'm here to talk about mostly is the water cooling stuff. So why don't we start with the things that are going to be in the back. So I want you to get a good view of the basement of the case here. And I want to show you guys what I've done here. So you can see here, I've installed my Antec High Current Pro 1200 watt power supply, and I've run the cables sort of where they're gonna need to go. So I've got my eight pin up here, I've got my 24 pin and my six pin tucked away. Those are gonna kind of bundle up here and then come up this hole to the motherboard. So no big problems there. And then I have all this space over here. Here are my Molexes, which are gonna provide power for the fans on my radiator, as well as power for my pump, are gonna go here. And then that's all I really have to work about, work around. So in this case, there is a lot of room for flexibility. Now, one of the most important things when you're mounting a pump and a reservoir is that the pump must feed, be fed rather, directly by the reservoir. So my reservoir is going to go right over here. I'm going to use double-sided adhe Velcro adhesive to mount it to the bottom right here. I'm going to use double-sided adhesive to mount my pump right here. And then what I'm going to be able to do by doing that is I'm going to have the pump taking water directly from the inlet of the reservoir. And then my quadruple radiator, which I'm going to cover in double-sided Velcro all along the bottom and then install this way is going to have one, uh, the outlet go directly into the reservoir and the inlet will come from the rest of the water cooling loop. Now, there's a couple reasons I configured the radiator exactly the way I did. I should tell you guys, performance is not really affected by whether you are pulling air through the radiator the way we are here, or you install them on the other side and push air through the radiator. It really doesn't matter. The reason I do it this way is because I like the clean appearance of the rad from the side like this. So I'm just going to go ahead and slide that in there right where it goes. I like the look. And the other reason is that it's much easier to clean this way. If you're pushing air into the radiator, you have to kind of blow uh, the dust out from between the fan blades. This way, since the air is being pulled through the rad, you've just got all these blades here. You just, cut, you just uh, blow the whole thing off and it's much, much easier to clean. So I'm going to quickly turn my case around and just show you guys how it's going to look from the other side once we have installed everything in the basement. It's really heavy. And I'm all over the course there. You got a good angle of that? So there's my pump taking water directly from the radiator. We're going to have a bit of a tight bend here, but that's okay. I might end up putting my reservoir at an angle like this in order to compensate for that and maybe moving the radiator back a little bit. But now that we've done our test fit, we can clearly see everything is going to fit just fine. So we're going to finish up installing everything that goes directly onto the motherboard before we move on to showing you guys some of the tips and tricks for the case. So I'm going to take just the tiniest, tiniest amount of thermal compound that I possibly can, and I'm going to apply it to the top of the copperhead ram. In fact, the thermal compound might not even be necessary. The reality of it is ram isn't really going to benefit in any tangible way from being liquid cooling. I'm, yeah, I'm just going to be honest with you guys about that. It, it's not really important. We're doing this for the sheer cool looks of it. And since we are not liquid cooling the motherboard itself with a full cover block, there we go, I'm just installing that there. Now I'm pulling out the screws here. Since we are not covering the motherboard itself with a full cover block, I figured, well, whatever. We might as well add some additional just for the sake of it cooling by doing the RAM. And since Mushkin had this really cool SKU, then I figured why not use it. So we use six screws in order to secure the copperhead water block to the copperhead modules. Being careful in the case of this particular block, since unlike the SwiftTech Apple GXT, it is not nickel plated. We do not want to touch the copper surface of the block anywhere because this will cause it to, uh, I don't know if the correct term is tarnish, but it'll cause it to look really ugly over time due to the oxidation of the copper and something to do with the acids that is in on your fingertips. So I'm just going to put all six screws on here and our copperhead block 
has gone from being a block and RAM modules to being kind of one complete liquid cooled RAM unit. Very solid on there. Now, the good news at this point, guys, is that once we've got the blocks installed on the board, the blocks installed on the card, and we've test fitted the radiator, the pump, and the reservoir, we can actually start to assemble the system. So you can see we've done a bit of a test fit here. This will really help with the visualization process that we're going to have to use in order to get the tubing installed, which is necessary before you can actually fill the thing with water. One of the other things that we're going to do before we run tubing is we're going to do all of the power cabling and data cabling that is involved in our build because the tubing, once it starts to string everything together, can really get in the way for those other steps. So this is pretty much the end of part two of our water cooling guide. I just wanted to show you guys this one last glamour shot where we're starting to get close to what the finished build is going to look like. And in the next episode, we're going to cover the fittings, the tubing, and actually filling the unit with water.